who have been very important to the success of this uh, conference. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce Bob Buchanan, our camera guy, video master, who works with us in each city. And he's been working here for two days, and he's doing it voluntarily, but I'm going to try to find some way to help him out. But here is a volunteer who's worked with us for four years, and Bob has done very well. And uh, his daughter, um, Brenna Buchanan Young, who is a PhD student in architecture and gerontology, part of New Cities, and has always been there to work with us. John Sharif, PhD student in American Studies, and uh, was there at the beginning of the New Cities. Uh, we will be introducing them, Rebecca Peterson and Bob Rummer, uh, who are, uh, well, here's Rebecca and Bob Rummer, you know them, who are working closely with us on research and, and funding sources. And if you don't have, if you don't have their listing about 10 pages back and front and back, you should have it for their presentation. They've done uh, wonders for us. Um, of course, the workshop leaders were critical and you know who they are, and uh, I extend my thanks to them, and also the staff at the Orient Hotel. Uh, I appreciate that, and for the most part, I thought the food was quite good. Not in every case, but I think it was really good for a hotel uh, here in Lawrence. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce again Harry Rick Moody, who is going to comment. Uh, I hope not with... Uh, full mouth there, I have to uh, interrupt his lunch, okay. but he's ready for it. I'm ready so, for anything. here you are. Thank you. And you know I don't need the microphone, I didn't need it yesterday. Okay, I'll take it back. And our cameraman is going to watch me moving, and I'm going to, you know, we can, you know, I joked about that. I got to begin with a little funny story. Live and learn, get wiser. There's another way of saying, see what a fool you were when you were younger. When I was about 30 years old, I just got involved in the aging business, and you know that I was trained as a medievalist in philosophy, great preparation for aging. So when I went to my first conferences of the Gerontological Society, everybody knew me. You know how they knew me? Because I was the guy who had a, had a tape recorder, a little tape recorder, and there were so many sessions that interested me that I went around to each session with my tape recorder, and we put it on the table, and we tape record the thing that I couldn't attend, you know, like three or four different sessions. It took me a while to realize what a fool I was. But here I am doing it again, because this is the charge that Dennis gave me. I was sitting in all four, there were four of them yesterday, breakout groups, and today both, so that if you saw me, I was going darting back and forth, going to all of them, just like I was doing 40 years ago, trying to get it all. And I didn't get it all, because you can't get it all. It's like Rashomon, okay? You're going to get lots of different stories. I'm not going to give you the whole story of what you've experienced in the last two days. The good news is that it was videotaped. And as Dennis and I said, I would encourage people who are in one breakout group to watch the video of the other breakout group. It's very interesting because the two groups were different in certain significant ways. Remember when I began yesterday, I talked about Kant's three questions? You've got to forgive me my philosophical life. He said, what, what do I know, what should I do, and what may I hope? Okay? Knowing, doing, and hoping. Well, one group, I think it was the group, uh, where's Dave Becker? Is he here? I'm here. Behind you. The group that you were in, it seemed to me that was the knowing group. They, they had a lot of you know, higher education, research networks, uh, students. They're big on knowing. The other group, uh, Susan, was more, more big on, on doing. All right? I had that sense. Now, that's not absolute dichotomy, but that was, that was uh, somewhat of what it is. We have notes from both groups as well as video. So you should consult those, look at them, learn about it, and I'm not going to try to summarize that. Instead, what I'm going to do is just give you a couple of high points that I personally found significant about this whole event over the last 24 hours. Can you believe it? It's really just 24 hours that we've been here. We started yesterday at lunch. And then I'm going to talk briefly about some commitments. Commitments. This is what I'm going to do. This is what Dennis is going to do, and I went over this with him before I committed him. <laughs> Let's begin with the slogan, which is my slogan and your slogan. Think globally, but act locally. 
environmental slogan. And what it means is think about where you are in space and time. Where you are in space is here in the Midwest. And that is the strength and also the limit of what you can do. And as Goethe said, by his restrictions, the master proclaims himself. By his restrictions, I wish I could learn to do that. I'm a polymath, kind of like Dennis over here. Restrictions, but it must be the I-70 corridor and not the whole world. But if you do it right here, you have a message for the whole world. Unfortunately, uh, because of the demography of the graying of the Midwest, uh, you, you are the future. I showed that in my slide yesterday. So that's where we are in space. Where are we in time? We are in time at the moment of the beginning of the age wave, the aging boomers, 10,000 a day. You all know that. Also the beginning of the Affordable Care Act, which offers huge opportunities in terms of accountable care organizations, preventing hospital discharge, readmission. We'd go on and on and on. Over the next couple of years, there's going to be opportunities here because the hospital people have finally gotten religion. <laughs> that is to say, by religion, I mean they're going to do the right thing. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you a horror story. I work with the healthcare chaplaincy in New York. Uh, I work on biomedical ethics with them, with chaplains. And when I was there recently, they had told me, well, we went around to all the, hot, the top eight nonprofit hospitals in New York City to say to them, we can show you that engaging chaplains, that's their business, chaplains, will actually help reduce the readmission, the revolving door in hospitals. You all know what that is. Seven out of eight said, we're not interested. These are the CEOs of the hospitals. We're not interested. We make money on this. Stop for a minute to let the horror of that sink into you, of the medical industrial complex in this country. We got leaders who are spending money on human suffering because they make money. This has changed radically. And I know people who are making a business out of helping those leaders now avoid the penalties that are going to be coming their way. That's just one example. There's going to be many other examples um, of this moment in historical time. And the other, of course, is technology. We would not have had this conference. We would not be having these discussions 10 years ago, even five years ago, in terms of social media and all the rest of it. What else? Let me tell you something. This is a very unusual conference. You know the, uh, the, the Jewish question, how is this night different from all other nights? Okay. Passover. How is this conference different from all other conferences? I was telling Lee Foster and the people at my table, I don't go to conferences in aging where there are architects. They're never there. Okay? This is in the category of, uh, you know, uh, that question of how did Sherlock Holmes solve the problem? Um, he, he paid attention to the dog that didn't bark. The dog that didn't bark. So here's my point to you. I'm going to give you some praise and say, why is this conference special? because you brought in the people who are never there, the IT people, the business people, the architects, and so on. That's my praise. And here's my challenge for you. Who are the people who are not here with us? Who needs to be at this table? Number one is the marketing people. We don't have the marketing people here. And if we don't have them, remember we were talking? If we don't have them, we're going to blow it, because we won't get our message across. There are others that we don't have here, too. We don't have the government people. We don't have the insurance companies. We don't have the payers. We don't have the philanthropists. We need to have them. And we need to be, not necessarily at this conference, but in some format or other. So what makes this conference special is you and the fact that you come from all these diverse backgrounds. And I'm telling you, I, I go to GSA and all these places, all, I never see this dialogue across the community. The last point I want to make is something that um, I think it was Dave Ecker, but also uh, Jay Gugrim. There was a predecessor, the Midwest Council. What was it called? Yeah. Midwest on Midwest social Midwest research. Research on aging. Make sure. We are, as Lee Foster and I were going back, back to the future. We're reinventing things that ought to have been there all along. Interdisciplinary collaboration on a regional basis. What's more logical? 
we need to reinvent it, we need to recover it, we need to discover it. And who was I talking to you about, the physicists? Is it your brother? Okay, the people with the, uh, the Large Hadron Collider and all the rest of that. They're used to working with thousands of people. Many of us in academia, certainly in the humanities and social sciences, are not used to having papers in which we have 10 or 15 authors. We need to get used to it, because that's how cognition works today, what I call collaborative cognition. Uh, we need to learn from our successes and our failures. Dan Lee and I were talking about that. Nobody talks about their failures. They just disappear. We've got to better find out so they don't repeat them. And finally, translational research. That's what land grant colleges you think Iowa Kansas. <coughs> That's what they've been doing for 100 years since Abraham Lincoln started it. Okay, so you're just recovering something. Okay, my commitments and our commitments. Number one, after this meeting, I am starting yet another newsletter <laughs> called Campus Retirement Living, provisionally. Dennis and I are going to be joint editors of it because even though Campus Village is a wonderful idea. There's a hundred of them already, and they never talk to each other. They never communicate. Nobody, they're all in their own little silos, geographically speaking. We're going to create a neutral platform, not attempting to sell Campus Village or any particular service, but in an academic mode of actually exchanging knowledge. And I'm committed to doing that. I'm also committed to seeing if we can extend the I-70 corridor into Colorado, where I live. It already does extend. The road extends there. But is there some place for Denver or for Boulder or Fort Collins or wherever? Open question, but a good question. Uh, Dennis has already given you that fundraising sheet, OK? So this is a commitment which this whole enterprise is making to help people raise money. Very serious, very important. Um, I edit another newsletter called Teaching Gerontology that goes out to 3,000 faculty every month. And there are a lot of ideas that came out in this session that will end up in that newsletter. And they will be attributed to this organization and this enterprise. What's Dennis going to do? Dennis is going to have a debriefing conversation. And you decide who's going to be in that conversation in the next few weeks. I hope I'll be one of them. Uh, you're going to update the mind map and the website and the vision statement and all the rest of that. And that will be a conference report. Uh, this is not just going to be the Dennis Domer show. Um, of course, you know, nothing happens without a champion, without a leader. But no leaders are really ever effective unless they create a team of others who will do the work. We're all in the business of success, succession planning, if you want to put it that way. And he's going to do that. Uh, I said that this is too important just to be kept in Kansas. Remember my last slide said it had, uh, you know, Wizard of Oz. You're not in Kansas anymore. Uh, this is very <coughs> unusual, what you've done here, what we've done here in the last 24 hours, of having people talk across these different boundaries, these different disciplines. And uh, I want to see that publicized nationally. In the future, I would like to see this local enterprise, and it will remain local or regional, um, to be connected to national enterprises like Grant Makers and Aging, the Pioneer Network, all the GECs, not just a, a few exemplary ones, the Village to Village Network, which is promoting these local villages all around this country, Leading Age, the consortium for long-term care groups, Generations United, and last but not least, AARP. We need to make sure that we are thinking globally, but acting locally. That's, that's really my message for you. And um, I'm not going to comment on what the priority should be. You're going to look at the notes and report on that. I loved hearing about action items, because my last slide yesterday was, every great idea eventually degenerates into work. And that's exactly <laughs> what comes out of this. It, it won't happen unless there are real pilot projects, real connections among people. I got to tell you, I was thrilled last night uh, that we connected as Suzanne, the professor of architecture here. Where I'm is she? Here. OK. I was thrilled that you were the other. Yeah. And you hadn't known each other, right. right? I didn't know either of them. But I sometimes say to people, remember this, some of the older folks in the room, remember the song, The Great Pretender? Yeah. Yes, I'm the great pretender, <laughs> pretending that you're still. I think of myself as the great connector. And that's what thrills me the most, to connect people. And that's why, for me, that was a high point. Martin Luber, my final philosophical comment, once said, all real living, all real living is meeting. He wasn't talking about faculty meetings. <laughs> he was talking about what we've experienced in the last 24 hours. I'm thrilled to have been here. Thank you.